I'm going to show you how I built my cure box. So these are all supplies I'm going to use. Um, all of them are really cheap. You can find them pretty much anywhere. This is like those typical inserts you get for the particle board furniture at Walmart. It was like five bucks. And then the lamp, you don't have to get this exact lamp. I think this one was like $20. It's like 40 watts. I'm not sure. I'll put the link in the description, but you don't need one this strong. <laughs> you could even just put this box out in sunlight and, and call it good. So yeah, all I'm going to do is take these pieces of paper and I'm going to tape them inside of here because paper, white paper is reflective and I want all this light to be bouncing around. You could use aluminum foil and it'd probably work even better. I just don't like how crinkly it is and I want it to look good. So kind of a trick that I do, all of these come with these little inserts in here so you use them like to measure. So I'll set it on the edge here and I'll see I have about this much excess. Make a little mark. Definitely does not need the exact science. The whole thing should take you like, I don't know, five minutes. The longest part is going to be dealing with all the pieces of tape. Let's see how straight of a line I can cut. So I'm gonna see if this inserts. Sure does, good enough. And if anything stands out too much, you can just cut more, you can cut less. It's pretty simple. I think it hangs out a little bit more than I was expecting, but I just have straight of a line I can cut, which is not very, apparently. All right, now I'm going to go through and tear off a bunch of pieces of tape. And once you have all your tape on your paper, just insert it into the corners and press it down. I have something in there. Yeah, that's pretty much all it's going to look like. It doesn't matter if these little seams here aren't perfectly covered. You're going to get the same reflecting power <laughs> or effect either way. So the box is done as you can see there's a lot of like uh seams and gaps but it's not going to be a huge deal i went ahead and i grabbed some minis here um just so i can show the curing process and whatnot it's probably really hard to tell but the surface of them is kind of tacky it's kind of soft if i take my nail and if i start scratching i don't know if you guys can tell i'm gonna just like put some deep scratches in this it's okay they're cheap so you guys can tell there's this big old like, white lines right there. That's not gonna show up. So after I cure it, I'll try and do the same thing to this little baby dragon, and you'll see that that's not gonna happen. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in, the lamp in, and I'll show you guys how I set it up and how much this reflects in there. All right, so now it's plugged in. I'm gonna move these back. So with this set in there, you can tell that it reflects a lot. Um, and then all I do is I just take my minis, I'm gonna set them just kind of in the middle. Something I noticed that while I was making the box, I could have just used a white box. That probably would have worked just as fine. That or using double-sided tape would have been helpful. So all of these are about the same size. The baby dragons, since they're a little denser and a little bit heavier, will take the most time to cure. All right, so I'll have it all set up there and it'll probably take about a minute. It's not really an exact science. If you over cure it, I think it becomes a little bit more brittle. Um, so if you drop it, it's more likely to break, for example. And sometimes detail gets a little blurrier, that stuff. All right, let's see if this is about good. I'm gonna take that baby dragon that I scratched earlier. So it still scratches pretty easy. So I'm gonna take all of my minis and I'm going to turn them around. Because even though I have all of the white paper in here, so the lights be bouncing around, um, you still want to turn your minis at some point. Because the main source obviously be a lot stronger. 
than the light bouncing around. There we go. So it took about a minute for them to hear all the way. These took closer to two minutes because there's so much material, it just dents right there. So on the backs here, you can tell this is the one that I scratched beforehand, before it cured, it scratched really, really easily. And then this one, I did the exact same thing and it didn't scratch. Um, I'll demonstrate for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm pressing just as hard, trying to scratch the material and pretty much nothing's happening, which is a really good key. Of course, you want to do that on the back of the model or on the bottom, that way you're not you know, ruining your print as soon as you take it out. All right, but that's everything about how I cure minis and how I have a little setup here. The whole thing is like not even 20 bucks. The most expensive part is the lamp. So yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know.